Hey there, everybody. Professor Cloud here, or Brian, as you, if you would prefer. Um, we are here to talk about some of the tools related to ARM template development or just ARM template management. And there's a lot of tools that Microsoft provides from within the Azure portal that not necessarily everybody knows about. In this one, we're going to focus on the export template feature. Now, the export template feature can be found in every single resources navigation tree all throughout the portal. And what I'm referring to is down here at the bottom, and it will always be down near the bottom, uh, there is a export template item in that nav bar. Now, I'm inside of a resource group. The export template is associated then with all of the resources inside of this resource group. However, if I go and say click on this virtual machine here, there will also be a export template feature, but it will only display information related to just this individual resource. Now, what exactly is this export template feature? Uh, it provides you a very quick and easy way to retrieve a generated ARM template for the resource or resources that you have uh, or that the export template is associated with. So if we pull the export template here for this virtual machine, you can see here I have generated a export template in standard JSON. Uh, it is not the bicep version or anything like that. This is the standard JSON uh, ARM template specification. However, for the most part, it is very hard coded. Uh, it is going to be static based on the values that have been populated for that particular resource. You will notice, however, that there are four parameters provided up here at the top. These four parameters are the only reason that they have been generated is because they are references to, in three instances, other resources, connected resources, the network interface card, the uh, disk that the external disks that have been associated with the virtual machine and then they also went ahead and generated and they do this for every resource they create a parameter for the name of the particular resource but at the end of the day this is still a very hard-coded or static arm template we have the ability up here at the top there is a set of functions we can download the JSON template and parameters file as is we can add this to our ARM template library, which is part of the Azure portal, and will allow you to very quickly and easily uh, maintain your ARM deployments or your ARM templates inside of the Azure portal. However, it's not really meant to be, say, source code control, so if that's what you're looking for, it's not really the best use of it. Or you could redeploy it. You could deploy it into another region, into another resource group, but all of the values will stay the same, so you'll need to keep conflicts in mind when you go to do the deployment. You could also do a visualize of the template and the visualizing of the template will give you uh, a networking diagram of this particular resource. Now it's a virtual machine so there's not really much to virtualize. If on the other hand we were to go back to the resource group we could actually see a network diagram of how all of the resources are connected within that resource group. <clears throat> Let me go back to the ARM template. You can also very quickly switch to just the parameters. You could also pull a Azure CLI or Azure PowerShell script uh, that would help you if you needed to be able to run this ARM template from either one of those command line interfaces. Why am I talking to you about this? There's two major reasons for using this template. One is if you need to keep backup archived uh, scripted versions of your resources so that in a disaster recovery scenario, you have the ability to spin up a identical version of whatever the resource is that you've exported the template for. That is something that a lot of companies do. They then will export the JSON templates. They will then store them in, say, an Azure storage account or on an off-site disk or potentially in a source code control. And then it makes it very, very easy for them to be able to 
recreate something should a disaster occur. And I'm not talking about disasters only of the Azure variety or of the Microsoft variety. I'm talking about disasters of your own company resource variety, where a user goes in and accident, excuse me, accidentally deletes a resource or set of resources, or maybe they were even doing it mischievously. You would have the ability to recreate the exact resources with all of the exact same parameters, names, and functions, and so on, based on this exact template. The other reason, and by the way, this is what I do on a regular basis as I've been developing ARM templates ever since ARM templates were made available to the general public, because I was working at Microsoft at the time and I'm working at Microsoft now, is that this is a great starting point for development purposes. So if you have an idea of a architecture or a solution set that you are going to want to deploy, go into the portal, use the graphical interface one time, create the exact architecture that you want, the exact solution that you want. Then inside the resource group for all of the templates, for all of the resources in that solution, you can go down here to export template. And now all of a sudden you've got a starting point of a template that will deploy the entire solution. And let's say that solution needs to be geographically redundant in multiple regions, or you know that you're going to be spinning up a copy of that architecture for each customer or across different um, capabilities, dev, test, prod, teach, education, so on and so forth. A template is going to make it a whole lot easier to spin those architectures and solutions up in multiple fashions very, very rapidly. But because Microsoft does not do, in my opinion, a very good job of doing anything more than giving you the static view of those resources, this is still a great starting point to say, okay, let me now go through all of those static lines and say, this needs to be parameterized. This needs to be turned into a variable. And you get the idea. So instead of it taking, say, two weeks to write a complete solution down in JSON form from scratch, you can very quickly knock that down to say two or three days where you've already got the solution. You just need to make sure that everything that needs to be parameterized is parameterized. So make sure that you understand this export template feature. I think it's extremely powerful and great for those of us who are working in the ARM template language on a regular basis. Now, one question that will come up is what about BICEP? BICEP is the new language that Microsoft is using. I'll show you some things around BICEP that some of the new tooling has the ability to handle. But when it comes to the export template feature, it right now is only exporting in JSON. Microsoft does provide, through the Azure CLI, the ability to convert a JSON template to a BICEP template. So if BICEP is going to be your primary language for infrastructure as code, architecture as code, solution as code, then go ahead and use the export template feature before you do any development. Go ahead and export it and convert it into BICEP. Then do your development on the BICEP template to parameterize it, create your variables, and so on. That would be my recommendation. Hopefully this has been of value to you, and as always, if it has, please make sure to hit the subscribe button. Please make sure to hit the like button. And I'll see you in the next video.